Okay guys, so here is our second example dealing with the law of cosines. So in that first example, we talked about how to solve a triangle that was side, side, side using the law of cosines. Now in this video, we're going to be talking about how to solve a triangle that is side, angle, side using the law of cosines. Okay, so here is example two. We're dealing with side, angle, side. And here is our triangle right here to the left. And again, our equations for the law of cosines are down in the right hand corner. So let's go ahead and talk about how we're going to solve this. So the first step that we're going to do here is we're going to find this missing side here, which is going to be side A. Again, I know this is side A because it's opposite to angle A. Okay, so we're going to solve for side A. So we're going to use this first equation here. Again, lowercase letters. Those are talking about your sides, right? And then the uppercase, that's your angle, right? So we're going to use this first equation, and we're going to plug this information in right down here. So we know that side A, well, we don't know what that is, so we're just going to write A squared here. So we have A squared equal to B squared, which is going to be, again, opposite to angle B. Here's 9, so 9 squared. And then C is going to be right here, side C, so plus 4 squared. Then we have minus, we have 2 times side B, which is 9. And then side C, which is 4. And we have cosine of angle A, which is going to be 37 degrees. So we can see on the right side of our equation sign, right, we can go ahead and clean this whole thing up. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So we have a squared equal to, so this is going to give us 81. This will give us plus 16. Then we have minus, right, well, we're going to get 2 times 9. That's going to give us 18. And then we're going to have 18 times 4, and that's going to give us 72. So we're going to write 72 here, so 72 cosine of 37 degrees, okay? And let's go ahead and combine our like terms here. So 81 plus 16, we're going to get 97 here. So we get a squared equal to 97 minus 72 cosine of 37 degrees. Now. I'm going to go ahead and plug this into my calculator and see what I get for a value. All right, so just plugging this in, we get 97 minus 72 cosine of 37 degrees. And we're going to round this value. So 39.5. So we get A squared is equal to 39.5. 39.5. All right, so our last step to find side A is to take the square root on both sides, right? So when I do that, I take the square root of 39.5. We're going to get 6.28. So side A is 6.28. All right, so let's go ahead and record that. So side A, I'm just going to record it right here, is going to be equal to 6.28. All right. So, now that we have that side, right, we can finish off the rest of this triangle by finding the remainder of the missing values. So let's go ahead and erase this, and let's talk about what we need to do next, okay? So if you recall in the previous video when we were dealing with the law of cosines, solving side, 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 I told you to pick the biggest angle first, and I told you to pick that biggest angle because you run into a contradiction when dealing with sine, right? So for example, if I just draw out the unit circle real quick, and we'll just use this as an example. If I do sine of 45 degrees, right? Well, I can get the same value if I do sine of 135 degrees. Okay, so here is an acute and here is my obtuse angle, okay? Now the issue is when you plug this into your calculator, it's always going to return the acute angle, okay?
Okay, so you can run into an issue here because you could solve the rest of this using the law of sines. And let's say you were to solve this right here, angle B, using the law of sines. Well, it's going to return the acute angle for you where it should be the obtuse angle, right? So there's an issue here. That's why we say always solve for the biggest angle first. That way, the remaining two angles are always going to be acute and you won't run into this problem. So what you have to do at this point is you want to pick the smaller angle. And we can do that by looking at our side lengths here. We know that this is 9, this is 4, and this is 6.28, right? So looking at my two missing angles, which one's going to be bigger? Well, you just look at the side length, right? This angle right here, opposite to it, has a side length of 4, right? This angle here, opposite to it, has a side length of 9. This is going to be the bigger, right, of these two angles. So we want to go ahead and solve for this guy first, and then we can get this last angle, right? Again, if you were to solve for this angle first using the law of sines, you're going to run into an issue here because it's going to return the acute angle where it should return the obtuse angle. Okay, again, your calculator just does that by default. It's always going to return the acute angle. Okay, so that being said, you can continue on with this problem just using the law of cosines and you don't have to worry which angle you pick here. You pick either one, you're going to get the right answer. So we're going to use the law of sines here, meaning I'm going to solve for this angle first. All right. And then we can get this last angle. So just erasing that, using the law of sines, we're going to get the following. So again, we're trying to solve for angle C. So we say sine of angle C, right, over the opposite, which is 4, is going to be equal to, and then we're going to have sine of 37 degrees over the opposite, which is 6.28. All right, so at this point, we're going to go ahead and just plug this into our calculator. Again, you can cross multiply here. I'm just going to do it real quick in my calculator. So I do sine of 37 degrees divided by 6.28 and then times 4. And we get the following. So we get sine of angle C. And again, I'm going to round this. We get 0 0.3, 0 0.3833. Right? So if you want to get the angular value, we now have to take inverse sine. So angle C, take inverse sine, 0.3833. Plugging that into our calculator, we get the following. So after plugging this into our calculator, we get angle C is equal to 22.54 degrees. Now we can find our missing angle here, angle B, and again, we don't have to use the law of sines or cosines for this. All we have to do is take 180 and subtract our two known angles, right? So starting at 180, so we have 180 minus 37 minus 22.54 minus 22.54. And for angle B, we get 120.46 degrees. So angle B, we get 120. 0.46 degrees. Okay, so here are our missing values. All right, so that's how you use the law of cosines on a triangle that is side angle side. All right, and that is it.